Hey guys, 011 here um, with a new video. I would like to call this one Practical Application. So let's see if we can get this working. Okay. So this right here is my little command center. Um, this is a display. If you look at my video, graphical ones and zeros, you'll see how to make those. This is my clock pulse right there, just so I can, you know, get some timing and stuff. And then I've got, I'll explain the rest of this first. Um, global reset, just keep that in mind. I've got a clock start, clock on and off. I've got a start transmission plus four data bits. Then I have four address bits. Then I also have a read and a write. Now if we look across the way over here, you'll see boxes labeled 0 through 15. Um, each of these boxes is one byte of memory. Um, it includes addressing and all that other good stuff. So we've got our address plus the read-write signals going in through here. So these first four are the addressing. They'll go into here. Um, and then based on what torches or redstone we have in these positions, that'll uh, do the actual addressing for us. And then the read, no, write goes through on this side, read goes through on this side. Um, and then this is uh, these little memory things right here. And then pretty much all this is is just accessing it and then just storing the data. And then we've got the data lines running up on top. So if you look at this, um, when this goes high, this piston will push this redstone block down, which will light that up, which is how I get the signal from up here to down there. And then this data goes through every single one of these um, all the way to the end. And then there's also one more set of data up on top. I apologize for the, uh, the glitching of the video. I've got a lot of stuff running right now, um, just in here with the clock pulse going. And then I've got more uh, data up here. And then I've got addressing right here. But seeing as how the addressing doesn't actually need to go through to this next part, I only have the read signal going through. So let's do a quick little runaround thing. This is rather large, if you can't tell. OK, so each of these signals here goes onto these here and then down underneath here, which then sends them through over to here and then into onto here. Now, you may recognize this as a much larger version of a serial encoder, and that's exactly what it is. Um, this one has 5, 11 different inputs. That sounds about right. Anyways, so all the data gets stored, saved, and then encoded over there. Um, all of the uh, signal modulation happens under here. It's a lot of it. Um, wow, this is really glitchy. Okay. Uh, redstone, this is your clock signal, also the uh, encoded data signal. And then, oh, this line right here, it goes to the global reset. So this is actually, the global reset is connected to every single reset on every single one of these. So that's why I call it a global reset, because it will reset four different things. So we follow the clock signal over here. Now we're just assuming that this is some random distance of redstone. Um, I thought this might have been enough to sort of explain that, so that's what it, what it is. OK, now this is the decoder. Um, also very, very large. And then it'll take a serial input and make it a parallel output. And then the parallel output goes into the addressing and the, and the, uh, the memory. Um, this right here is the write signal. So when this goes through here, I have it on a pulse. Because the way that this is set up, um, the data will actually go on and turn off first um, before the write signal. So it's great for writing because the data gets here and then you write it and then it's good. But then when you're turning off the write signal, your data goes off first, but your write signal is still on. So that's a bad thing and that just causes whatever data you wrote to get erased or overwritten or whatever you want to call it. So to fix that, I made the write signal a pulse. So this will go through here. It'll set up the data. Then the write signal will pulse. It'll 
write it there and then the write signal will go off right away and then you can turn this off later and it's all good. Yeah, I really need to work on getting better recording software. Okay, so I've got a five minute li limit per video which means that we're going to be talking very fast. Right, so this right here is the vertical transmission that you'll see in some of my other videos. That's how I get the signal from down here all the way up here. Um, so it goes all the way through over here. La, da, 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 da. That right there is actually just some debugging that I put in. Um, it'll check to see if the signal's uh, on the line or not. Okay, so then the read signal comes through. And then what that will do is it'll force whatever data is stored into here to go onto the data lines. And it'll get set over here. And then when the read signal goes through, it goes over onto here through uh, this little vertical transmission thing over here. And it will go over there and set the data into the memory. And at the same time, it'll start the, uh, the encoding process. So now we're going from a parallel input to a serial output, which is right over here. And then we're going to follow this line. Do, 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 do. OK, so that's another debugger right there. Um, I was having some issues with timing, so and you can imagine with something this large, it, it's kind of ridiculous when you have to deal with timing. OK, so then this is a, another decoder. So this will take the uh, encoded data that I got from the memory over there. So it encodes it, sends it on a serial line, then it decodes it, sends it onto parallel lines through these memory circuits right over here, right down there. And then that'll go down onto these lines right over here, which will then go all the way up onto here and into my graphical 1 and 0 display. And that's pretty much how it works. So go over this real quick. Encoder with a lot of inputs decoder with a lot of inputs, memory, then another encoder just for what comes off of the memory, and then another decoder. And then that gets shown on the display here. Okay? All right. Now let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, so this global reset will actually go with a full circuit. So this will go on as soon as I hit this. And then when it finally gets back to here, this one will go on. So you can see about how long it takes and to go all the way through. And the reset is has just enough repeaters for propagation. That's it. So yeah, you can see that it actually takes a little while. There we go. It's all, all the way through. We'll turn that off. And that's off. OK. So now we want to write some stuff, right? OK, so we are going to write to. Now let's go to the first one. So address bit one, so this is memory location one. It'll be that one right over there. Um, we are going to write. And then we'll put in, no, eh, not that one. I don't like that one. We'll do this one and this one. So it'll be the third and the fourth one. OK, so now we're going to start the transmission. It'll go through. Um, not really sure how long it takes. But uh, we'll just fly over there and we'll see if it takes or not. Now, I have been having issues with um, the pistons and the redstone blocks. Sometimes they get locked open or locked closed, and it's just not good. OK, so this third one and fourth one should go off, which they both do. So that redstone torch right there, that redstone torch right there both went off, which is exactly what I want. These ones stayed on. So as you can tell, these are the inverse. So this is actually a 0, 0, and a 1, and a 1. OK. So we know that the data is stored. Oh, such a big map. OK. Now that that has been done, we need to reset all the encoders and decoders. So we'll wait for that to go through. OK. Shut that off. Wait for that to go off. OK. Now we are going to read. Um, we don't need the data because we're actually reading the data. So if you have the data set through, it'll actually push data through on the data lines. Whereas if you want to read it, you have to make sure that there's nothing on the data lines over here. So that way it pulls directly off the memory and it shows just that. So yeah, OK. Now we want to read. We don't want to write. We're still going into memory location 1. Do, 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 do. And we are going to start the transmission. OK, so it'll take about 24 clock pulses to do all that. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 
eight. God, this takes so long. Yeah, and you can see down there the they're working slowly. I mean, it's a clock. It's one clock pulse per each of these things, and there's like thirteen. Okay, another five minutes gone. All right, so I believe this is still going through. Um, all right, so the cool thing about the encoding and decoding is as this is pushing data out, this is already taking in the data. So this does not have to finish for that to start. But the only problem is because the read and the write signals are on those last two over there, and the memory needs to wait for those to get there before it'll actually do anything. So, you know, that has to go through the entire thing, which is why it takes so long. Um, so yeah, this is our third and fourth one. Uh, we show both ones here. Um, that's what we had set. So it works. Um, I stored some data in, uh, I think, 15 and 0. So I'm going to pull those ones as well. Just so you can see, this does, in fact, pull you know from each of the memory sources individually. And that shouldn't take more than five minutes, hopefully. We'll see. OK, so reset went through. Wait for the reset to go off. OK, so we want to read, which is what that last one is, from memory location 0, which is what that is. Uh, so we are going to check it out, see what we can see. Do, 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 do. This is exciting, by the way. So yeah, um, we should be able to see the data come through right there as soon as it gets here. I'm going to fall asleep pretty soon. Hurry up! Did not go through it. No, it didn't go through yet. Oh, there we go. One, two. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Whatever. Anyways, so I had all one stored in zero one, which is correct. Um, we can go over there and look at it if you want, but that'll take time, so we'll skip that. Um, okay, we're gonna reset, and we'll also go on to. Let's see, memory location 15, just all those. Okay, so the reset went through. Got to turn off the reset. Okay, this got reset, which is good. That's already set, so now we're going to send this through. And another 30 seconds later, hopefully, we'll have some data. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, if this wasn't Minecraft, if this was actual electronics and stuff, um, the delay here would be nowhere near what it is because electricity will travel pretty much an infinite distance as long as there's a force behind it, whereas redstone does not. So having to push it through all of these different things and all of those different things and all and pushing it all the way through these lines takes up a lot of time. So for Minecraft, you know, this is kind of slow unless you get like super huge memory and stuff like that. So by the way, um, I had that set in memory 15. We can take a look if you want. Yeah, we'll do that. But uh, yeah. In Minecraft, this is slow unless you get, you know, just a ridiculous amount of memory. Now, if I were to let, if I were to add one more data line or address line over here, I could double my memory. If I were to add two more, I could, like, quadruple it. So that's a lot of memory. Um, okay, so 15 is up here, and you'll see that we have the first and second one on. The third and fourth one are off, which is what it was supposed to be. Now we'll head over to zero, which is down here. All right, now all of these should be off because that was stored as a 15. So there you go. Um, practical application for encoding and decoding using 16 bytes of memory. Um, I have a little command center, graphical display. Um, I mean, this is pretty much the rudiments of a computer right here. I mean, all I have to do is add in like uh, an arithmetic logic unit. I throw it over there, something running off the same serial line. It doesn't really matter. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much all a computer is. You have memory, you move it to and from or you have data, you move it to from your memory, then you move that data into your arithmetic logic unit, you take your outputs, then you store it back into memory, and then you can do stuff with it, and that's pretty much it. So there you go. Um, practical application, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see anything more specifically, leave a comment. Um, if you like it, like it. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, hit subscribe. And yeah, uh, we'll cut it off there, and have a good day.